In this video, I'm going to talk about a modular approach to survival and EDC. I was watching a video the other night, I think it was entitled uh, Ultimate Survival Kit. And um, this video is not in any way meant to be a critique of that video. The guy that did the video, he had a kit, he really liked it, he was really happy with it. Um, you know, everybody has different needs, everybody has different objectives. If you have a kit that you put together and it meets your needs and you're happy with it, that's perfect. Um, for me, I was looking at it and going, well, that's awfully big and heavy. I don't want to carry that around with me everywhere. Uh, and, you know, I was kind of thinking to myself, what problem is he solving? Because it had wilderness survival things in it, like ways to make fire and water filters and shelter and things like that. Um, it also had urban survival kinds of stuff, um, you know, more like cables and charging equipment and, and stuff you might use more around the city kind of thing. It had um, a bunch of tools and it had first aid supplies all in this one, you know, big kit. And for me, I was thinking about, well, if I go to go hiking in the woods, I've never headed out to go hiking in the woods and accidentally ended up in the city. So if I'm going hiking in the woods, I'm going to need a wilderness survival kit. I'm not going to need a urban survival kit. I've never headed to the city and accidentally ended up in the woods. Uh, I, you know, again, if I'm heading to the city, I would bring my urban survival gear, wouldn't need my wilderness survival gear. Now, you could say, well, what if you're driving to the city and you're truck breaks down by the side of the road in the woods. Um, you know, I actually have water and food and blankets and things like that in both of my trucks as well. Um, you know, in terms of needing tools, you know, I need tools to fix things around the house. I need tools when I'm at work, although I work from home now. Um, I've needed tools because my trucks have broken down, but I have tools in the trucks. Um, if I'm camping, you know, and, and got my camper somewhere, I need tools for that. Um, so, you know, you have a pretty good idea when you're going to need those. Now, first aid is a little bit more, um, you know, hard to pin down. That can kind of come anywhere, anytime. Um, I do have first aid kits in both of my trucks. Um, but, you know, the, the idea I had was make four small modular kits that I can bring what I need. And um, I'm showing here on the screen, these are actually two kits that I've done videos about, about already. My first EDC video ever was this kit right here. This is a tool kit. It's in a Leatherman tool pouch. Um, if I open this up, and, and I'm not going to go through this whole thing because I have a whole video on it. It's got a Leatherman surge tool, a very capable multi-tool. It's got the bit extender. Um, I have a set of Weeha double-ended bits. I'm not a big fan of the Leatherman bit kit because um, they're not really full-fledged bits. It's got some saw blades in here. It's got a little uh, ratchet wrench. It's got a pry bar. It's got a flashlight. This is the charging cable for the flashlight. And it's got double-ended sockets, Klein double-ended sockets. So this is a very capable kit. And the beauty of this pouch is not only does it hold a lot of stuff, and I could actually put more stuff in there, but it's got loops on the back that you can put through your belt. So in the summertime, I'm out walking around. I, I have these cargo shorts I wear all the time. That could go in the pocket of the cargo pocket of one of the, you know, of the shorts. This could go in the belt. And actually, if I had another kit that was this kind of size, I could have that in the other pocket. So I could bring three things with me at once. Um, this kit is a small survival kit. This is a Maxpedition Mini. Uh, pouch. It's six inches by four inches. Um, it's kind of packed, so it's thicker. Again, I have a video on this. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. You know, you've got a water filter, water bag. There's a space blanket in the back there for shelter. You've got some cordage. You've got a Bic lighter. You've got uh, a flint. You've got a little bellows here for getting the fire going, some tinder up here. You've got a compass, a whistle. There's a signaling mirror in here, a bunch of other things. Um, you know, so this is like get stuck in the woods overnight, keep you alive 
kind of kit that you should have with you if you go off into the woods. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I got, I got my first two pieces. I got them already. Um, now, then you say, okay, well, I need something for first aid. Now, if you want to do something for first aid and you don't want to customize something yourself, I would recommend this. This is a Live the Creed personal first aid kit. This is a brilliant piece of kit. It's small, very small. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's significantly smaller than this Maxpedition pouch. When you think of first aid, to me, there's sort of three tiers. There's the minor cuts and scrapes you're going to get on almost a daily basis that you need a boo-boo kit for. And this has a little boo-boo kit right here with some band-aids in it and some antibiotic ointment and things like that. On the top end, there's the things like, um, you know, you get a very traumatic injury and you're bleeding to death. And this has some gloves to protect you if you're helping somebody. It's got some hemostatic gauze. So this gauze here, you can pack a wound with it. You can wrap it around the wound. It reacts with the blood to help stop the flow, stop the bleeding. And it's got a tourniquet. Now, if you're just going to carry a tourniquet, the best tourniquet to carry is a cat tourniquet. And the reason for that is a cat tourniquet is something that you can apply with one hand. So if your left arm gets really badly damaged, you can put the cat tourniquet on your left arm with your right hand and save your own life. This tourniquet, you need two hands to apply. So you say, well, why would you carry this? Well, it fits in this form factor wise, number one. Number two, this is a kind of dual use item. With a cat tourniquet, it's really a tourniquet. With this, this is a sort of elastic that you wrap around. And if you wrap it really tight, it's a tourniquet. If you wrap it around less tightly over this quick clot sponge here, it can serve as a pressure dressing. So it's a dual use kind of item, which is what makes it so powerful in a kit like this. So, you know, highly recommend going and buying something like this if you're not going to do something to make your own kit. Now, um, being me, I made my own kit. Um, I wanted a little bit more coverage than that. And I found this bag on Amazon. It's nylon. Uh, it's got a zipper with, uh, you know, double ends on it, double poles. It's got a little band for carrying it. It's not the heaviest duty construction. I, I would kind of like it to be maybe a little better constructed, but it's pretty good. It was cheap. And, and well, before I open it, it's pretty much exactly the same size as the uh, Maxpedition Mini. So it meets my four by six. It, it, it is four by six by like one or one and a half or something like that. Filled like this is probably closer to two, but this would fit in the cargo pocket of my um, you know, my cargo shorts that I wear in the summertime. And, uh, you know, I could have this in one pocket and this in the other pocket. And if I wanted to bring tools with me, I could have that on my belt. So it gives me, you know, mix and match capability. And if I open this up, so this is a Celox. This is a hemostatic gauze. Reacts with blood to stop blood flow. It's a little bit bigger than that other one. You can pack a wound with this, or you can put this on as a pressure dressing, and here's a SWAT T tourniquet that you can wrap around this to be a pressure dressing. Again, it's in here because it's dual use. In a bigger kit, I might have a standalone cat tourniquet and have an actual pressure dressing, but pressure dressings are really big. Um, North American Rescue pair of gloves, really nice form factor. These are really small. This is some North American Rescue compressed gauze. So this gives you some additional capabilities. So if you had two wounds, the most serious one you could use this on, a less serious one you could pack with this, or you could wrap this around it. Compressed gauze like this is one of the most versatile first aid items you can possibly carry. 
Got a pair of tweezers in here. I'm probably going to swap these out for some Uncle Bill tweezers. I have some on order. I just didn't have them at the particular moment. I, I literally put this together today. A minimum med pack, in my opinion, looks like this. This is missing one item, which I'll talk about in a minute, which is also on order. This has, um, this is a pack of extra strength Tylenol. It has two packs of Advil. Advil's ibuprofen. It has two 200 milligram tablets in each pack. So, so in here, I can take, I've got four 200 milligram tablets of ibuprofen and two extra strength Tylenol tablets. If you look in some wilderness first aid books, they talk about in a situation where somebody's really badly injured and needs the maximum pain relief possible without having prescription medications, you can give them 800 milligrams of ibuprofen and two extra strength Tylenols at the same time because Tylenol is metabolized in the liver and uh, ibuprofen is metabolized in, uh, I think the stomach, uh, not the liver, <laughs> it's in a different place. Um, also some Benadryl in case you have an allergic reaction to something. Of course, if it's an anaphylactic reaction, you're gonna need an EpiPen, which is a prescription, but this is the best option you have short of that. Um, it's got some Imodium here. Um, diarrhea, it can dehydrate you. It can be life-threatening. Um, so it's always good to have that. The item that's missing from this that, that's on order, um, I'm going to put four um, chewable baby aspirin in a little med bag and put them in here. If someone's having a heart attack and you have them chew four 80 milligram baby aspirin, um, it dramatically improves their outcome. Now, you need to make sure that they're not going to have an anaphylactic reaction to the aspirin. Um, you know, obviously, if somebody is dying of heart attack, <laughs> causing an anaphylactic reaction with the aspirin on top of that is, is not going to do any good. Um, but if they can tolerate aspirin, if you can give them the aspirin, it will really help with the outcome and, and could save their life, certainly could make the quality of their life after the heart attack much better. So to me, these are sort of the critical meds that you should have with you. And then this is the boo-boo kit. Um, there's some Band-Aids in here. There's some antibiotic ointment, a little bit of moleskin. So if you have a blister, this is a little burn pad thing. Um, got a couple povidine iodine wipes for wiping um, injuries. And there's actually a little bit of burn gel in here as well. And, uh, you know, this, in these, these bags, um, and I'll, I'll link to all this stuff down below for this kit. The other two, you know, watch the videos and everything's linked in the videos for those. Um, I haven't done a video on this because, like, like I said, I just created it today. Um, my links are not affiliate links. I don't make any money on them. It's just for your convenience. But this, to me, is a nice little small, easy to carry, you know, fit in your cargo pocket, fit in the pocket of a jacket, easily fit in a backpack, very capable first aid kit in a really, you know, nice small form factor. It's bigger than this, but this has the, um, this has the um, compressed gauze in it, which this does not, which gives you a little bit more capability to handle multiple injuries. And this has the med pack and this does not. So, you know, there are some advantages to this. Okay, last kit urban survival, quote unquote. Um, this kit is a little too big, okay? It's about the right width. It's too long, too tall. Um, it's a little thick. I don't know that uh, whether this would fit in a cargo pocket <laughs> in the shorts. Um, certainly it could fit in the backpack. Um, it's not a bad little kit. It's got a nice little handle on it, the double zippers and stuff. Um, again, got this off of Amazon. I have not made a video on this. I will, um, you know, put a, uh, I'll put a link to the items that are in this below. Um, this side is the electronics. This is a Nightcore 10,000 milliamp hour battery pack. This is the smallest, lightest 10,000 milliamp battery pack made. Um, very, very nice battery pack. 
This is a space pen. Writes on anything and it comes apart and now you have a full size pen. Nice full size pen. Protects itself in storage. Doesn't take up much space. This is a headband and this goes to the headband and that all goes to this light. This is a new light for me. This is an Olight uh, little flashlight here. Uh, on its highest setting, this is like a thousand lumens, so it's very bright. On its lowest setting, this thing is supposed to last for several days. Um, so it's you know got various brightnesses. Um, it's got a magnetic base here that you can put on things to hold it in place. It's got a clip that can go on your pocket. It could go on the bill of your hat, um, or you know it can go into this that goes with the headband there, and you can use it as a headlamp. Um, so very nice, very functional lamp and you've got a little charging cord here so you can you can charge it up. Um, so that's a new lamp for me. Um, I, I do wish this headband was not so huge. It uh, takes up a lot of room in comparison to the light. Um, you know it seems to me like there could should be a less extensively large solution for that. And then this is my charging cable. This thing is phenomenal. Um, USB-A to USB-C. Flip it around, you've got lightning, and in the middle of it is actually a USB micro. So you've got USB micro, lightning, USB-C from USB-A, or USB-C to USB-C micro lightning. Um, USB-C, by the way, if you can plug into a USB-C socket, you can get a lot more power than you can get from USB-A. So we zip up this side. So that's the electronics. And this is the personal stuff. Um, I can't read anything without reading glasses. Uh, in this small survival kit, by the way, there is a Fresnel lens in here, a small credit card size Fresnel lens, which you can use for making fire, but I could also use to read things if I had to. If I'm in the city and I lose my reading glasses, uh, you know, I can't even go into CVS and look at stuff on the shelves or a grocery store without my glasses. So these are plus two and a half reading glasses. They just kind of sit on your nose and they come in this little carrying card and uh, it's a great option for that. Got a little field notebook for writing, and you saw the pen on the other side. This is a surgical mask. I get these from Chinook Medical. They're ASTM certified. These are real surgical hospital quality masks, not cheap masks. And you know, with COVID around, you need a mask sometimes to go in places, plus just for your personal protection, it's good to have. Microfiber cloth for cleaning glasses, screens. Two um, single dispense Purell hand sanitizer. And this is a stallmate, which is, um, you know, if you go to, a, go to the bathroom and uh, you need to wipe afterwards and there's no toilet paper, this is a flushable hypoallergenic, you know, cleaning wipe so that, uh, you know, you can wipe yourself if you're a male and you're you know, doing solid business, you can uh, take care of that. And if, if you have a female with you and they need a wipe, they will love you forever that you remember to bring something like that with you. So that's a nice thing to, uh, you know, to have in a pinch. And then just a couple of Band-Aids, Advil if you have a headache, Imodium in case you get diarrhea. You know, there's a, so there's a little bit of overlap between the stuff in some of these kits, but not much. And, uh, you know, obviously if you have the first aid kit with you, you've got a little bit of overlap in the meds. Um, you know, there's some things like that. Uh, if you have the tool kit with you and you have the, the um, wilderness survival kit, you know, you're going to have a Leatherman tool and you're going to have a Swiss Army knife tool. But, um, you know, generally not a lot of overlap. And you could carry, you know, a couple of these 
at the same time. And, you know, if I've got on cargo pants or cargo shorts, that can be in a belt, that can be in a cargo pocket, that can be in a cargo pocket. Or belt, cargo pocket, cargo pocket. Again, this is a little big. I'm looking f at some other possibilities for maybe a little bit smaller kit here. And um, also, I have a, a memory stick on order to go in here that has the multiple interfaces where it can plug into an iPhone with a lightning connector or USB-C or USB micro or USB-A. So that will be going in here um, as soon as that arrives. So that's the basic idea is my four kits covering the four types of circumstances that uh, or capabilities that I that I think you need. Um, if you like this video, you know, please hit like, please hit subscribe. There's, um, you know, I've been creating a lot of content in this space lately. And, uh, you know, there'll be some more of this kind of smaller EDC kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm also thinking about some videos about some of my tool bags and um, some bigger things like that. Um, you know, what I have for, like I have a uh, big camper and I have a keep the camper running kit and I have uh, keep the camper running parts box and things like that So some of that stuff if, if that's of interest. So um, Thank you